Martinez. Here. Okay, then I'm moving to item uh, A4, uh, adoption of change in the order of the agenda. So moved. A second. Uh, roll call. Trustee Blanco. Adoption and change in the order of the agenda. Oh, aye. Trustee Chavez? Aye. Trustee Sanchez? Aye. Trustee Martinez? Aye. Okay, that passes. Um, item B, communications from the Board of Education. Is there anybody that wants to update the board on that? Uh, through the chair, yes. I would like to say uh, to thank uh, Mr. Bella Kemp and the staff at Allen, as well as uh, John Muir, who we visited last Wednesday in the various classes. Uh, and I was with Trustee Chavez as well, spent the morning. It was very engaging to look at instruction that's being delivered across two schools and recommend the other school board members also do that to see how instruction is being carried out and the variation from class to class. I've got something to say. Sure. Um, I want to uh, say something about the last meeting we had. Um, I want to, um, if this was corporate America with our CBO still here, I got to admit. I'm surprised that Wendy, I'm surprised that she's still here. Um, she did stand up. She, um, I found her to be an insubordinate, to be, I found her to be insubordinate um, with her accusations of me being a bully and bullying her when all I've been doing is doing my due diligence and asking for information um, to provide to the community, to the public that we answer to. And if we were to, run this district as corporate America, Wendy, you, you wouldn't be here today. Um, I, I'm concerned, uh, I'm concerned, excuse with, me, the, just I'm to, concerned you with the future staff of John Daly and Wendy being here. I'd like to propose that we have an upcoming, maybe under closed session, um, to speak about the, their future here in our district. Um, and so um, that, that meeting was a complete disaster. Um, and especially with Henry, um, speaking the way he did to, to uh, Cherry and to myself. Um, I have to really admit, I really think that if Terry and I were men, I don't think Henry would have spoken to us that way. Um, so um, I hope that that doesn't happen again. And, um, and I, I, I really think that we really need to see how this district allows um, district employees address members of the board. Okay, uh, public comment. This item is uh, placed on the agenda for. I can pass it to you, sorry. Sorry. I know, but I can pass it to you. Thank I don't you. need her on the front of the case. She can, I, oh, she can pass it to me. Um, this item is placed on, on the agenda for members of the public to address the board on items uh, within the board's purview that are not on the agenda. Um, I do have a card this evening from Karen Byrne, it's PDA. On E. I'm sorry, I thought it was to this. Okay, thank you. Did I put the wrong thing again? No, 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 you did, fine, thank you, I'm sorry. Beg your pardon. Well, you mentioned that I did the wrong thing last time. So E1. Okay, um, seeing now we move to um, action items. We have, uh, Item D1, consideration of authorization of staff to pursue negotiation of Allen Elementary School architectural services consist consistent with the RFQ slash P number 0005. to have HY Architect be the architect of record for the Allen Elementary Project. Um, we started this process early on uh, back 
what we did with the proposals. And so the following firms had provided proposals for the Measure X architectural services, and they had been received by uh, February 8th deadline, and we had 12 of them that were listed. Um, from that, we had interviews where we had uh, three people on the interview panel, Dr. Kim, myself, and um, Rick Champion, the CBO from Millbury, where it was on that the, uh, panel. And we rated the criteria for the firms, um, being responsive to the RFQP, the project references, firm qualifications, firm performance history, proposed project team, technical capabilities, uh, litigation history, pre-proposal um, for the general and the uh, project specific. Um, after we had <coughs> done those interviews, we narrowed it down, or I should say, after we did that rating, we narrowed it down to six firms. And then from those six firms, we narrowed it down to three firms. And those three firms were um, approved last board meeting uh, as being a pool for uh, architects that we would pull from for any of the projects for the Measure X. And those were HY Architects, RT, and um, DTA. Then we went a little further on that, and what we did was, uh, those three firms, we asked them to come back and give a 45 minute presentation um, on the Allen Elementary project. And they had to include the information on the following items. How will your firm conduct conduct public outreach? How will your firm ensure staff and student participation in the design process? And we also wanted them, uh, the uh, program construction management, um, totally gave them uh, to look at a fee, for them to propose a fee based on an anticipated construction cost of $34 million with a duration of approximately 32 months. And after going through the, um, the presentations, um, they gave us a glimpse of what would happen in, in their rendition of what the Allen Project might look like or might, how we might uh, go about doing it. It was a very exciting to hear. Um, and we, after listening to the responses, <coughs> we felt that HY Architects uh, would be, give us the best um, exposure and uh, they were in the middle as far as cost is concerned. We were a little concerned about one of the costs because we didn't believe that it in, uh, <coughs> encapsulated every, all the expenses <coughs> the So we chose HY um, Architects, and that's what we're waiting for this evening, to be the um, architect of, uh, for Allen Elementary Project. Do the chair so moved? negotiation of Allen Elementary School Architectural Services consistent with RFQ 
slash p number 005. And ID2, approval of updated network manager job description. What we did on updating the um, network management uh, manager was actually to uh, include the actual programs that we were using. And um, instead of having PowerSchool, we had Illuminate, um, we had the DNA Illuminate, and we had the Blackboard. So those are the changes that we made. Um, and then we uh, maintain email and email archive systems as being Google instead of the mirror point, um, we took out the M86 under the maintenance of firewalls and content filter because we were not using that, and maintain district and school websites because we went to Blackboard, I, we put Blackboard in there. Um, then the only other thing change that we did was in the overview, we took out uh, act as the webmaster and other duties assigned. We put down work with the site and district to keep websites up to date. And those were the changes that were made. To the chair, so moved. Is there a second? A second. Uh, is there any public discussion? Any part any discussion from the board? Or from uh, yeah, uh, the original the board. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. So is this going to um, since we no longer have a director of IT services because he was let go, um, is this taking over that position? It will not take over and be an IT director. It will be the network manager. Okay, so um, who's, I thought the director of IT when he was hired, that he was to record our meetings. That was our understanding. So who's going to record our meetings for um, we will be working with the network manager to um, look into that. We've already sent him to <coughs> um, we sent him to a workshop on YouTube so that we could understand how the process works, and he will be getting back to us on when and if that can happen. Who is um, so? Do you do you already have someone in mind for to become the network manager? It is in the personnel, classified personnel um, report this evening. Oh, Carlos. Yes. This evening, okay. I did see that. Any other questions? And do you, do you, do you um, have an estimated date of when um, we will start having our meetings recorded? No, I do not. Okay. Okay, so on, on the question, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes for O with one absent. Um, item E1, classified personnel report. Consent? Yes, to the chair. So move. Second. not here, but I would like these added to the minutes. Um, okay. so I can send them electronically, too, if that's easier, but I brought them. That would be great. Yeah, no. I, I understand. I, I, I'm happy to send them electronically as well. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Administration. The San Bruno Education Association has ongoing concerns about the appointment of John Daly as supervisor and maintenance of operation. The appointment creates the appearance of a conflict of interest in that Mr. Daly is in a relationship with the Deputy Superintendent, Business Division of the San Mateo Office, County Office of Education. The County Office of Education has routinely granted San Bruno Park School District a waiver to the current expense formula minimum classroom compensation requirements of Education Code 41372. 
as recorded on form CEA in the unaudited actual report. And when the district is granted a waiver to this provision, it directly benefits those being paid outside of the total salaries and benefits that are used in the CEA calculation, including the position of supervisor and maintenance operations. By freeing up monies for salaries and benefits, benefits for those working outside the classroom. This appointment is further complicate, complicated by the unique, unique, ugh, sorry, uniquely troubling and concerning way in which compensation for that position has been presented to the board recently. On August 8, 2018, the board approved an action item that was properly put on the board agenda, which established a 2018-19 salary schedule for all management, confidential, and unrepresented employees, and specifically included a 2018-2019 confidential management salary schedule effective 7-1-2018. It's in the packet. This salary schedule was mistakenly titled as con Financial instead of classified management. Since that meeting, there has not been any board agenda item which identified a change in compensation for any of the employees in this group. On November 14, 2018, the board passed an action item that was put on by the board agenda as new Durab description behavior specialist supervisor. This, act this action item had two attachments. Management Salary Schedule 1819 and Job Description Behavior Specialist Supervisor. The Management Salary Schedule included three changes to the board's August 8th action. It corrected the title to say Classified Management Schedule rather than Confidential Salary Schedule. It added the position of Behavior Specialist Supervisor to the Classified Management and it significantly increased the salary for one position, the position of supervisor and maintenance. I sent it, just off this and I can add it if you would like, I sent an email regarding this to Ms. Richard and Dr. Kent and to the board over the weekend on Friday and re received reply late this afternoon. Ms. Richard sent me a reply this afternoon, April 24th, explaining that this was an error. SBA simply remains very concerned with the appearance of a conflict of interest. In any case, error or, or not error, the Brown Act was clearly violated either way. Either was there was never an agenda item identifying the specific position for a salary increase or that there was an error that how it occurred from the November, from the August to the November and that it was being changed. So the board should have been notified in November that there was an error that was being changed. SBA is demanding an explanation as to how this ongoing conflict can be resolved and what step this board can and intends to take in order to see that the Brown Act is followed. Thank you. Um, also have comments, uh, Chris Kiley. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not speaking today anything about Mr. Daly personally, but I've never met him until tonight. And Seems like a good guy, speaks intelligently, which is a big step forward in, in my book at all times. Um, more addressing though, the process that's been going on here to get this far. In addition to the things that uh, Karen mentioned, there's a whole bunch of other troubling things going on with this one that any one of them would have been a red flag. But here they're all together and that's a big concern. One thing she didn't mention is the fact that the county office is overseeing us. So the fact that whether there's a conflict or of interest or not with his interactions with Ms. Porterfield, she's overseeing this district. This is not an outside third party who is just sort of randomly reviewing stuff once a year. We're under county supervision specifically. Um, it's a bigger conflict than it would be under normal circumstances. Uh, second, the job description approved by the board at on November, I mean, excuse me, December 13th, 1987. That's not the same job description that was posted on EdJoin the next day. They're different. The one the board approved was dumbed down from the one requiring less experience than the one that was posted. So that could either mean that somebody changed the EdJoin job description afterwards, but I can't really see a staff employee jumping in and deciding to add things on the next day to file it. Because it was filed the very next day after the meeting. Or that would mean that 
the job description we filed with EdJoy was prepared by a conscientious employee ahead of time, but somebody changed it before it got on the board's agenda. And if you look at the items on the agenda, which proved two job descriptions that day. One was, so I believe that was Valerie's position, and the other was Mr. Daly's position. Valerie's is a very long, detailed, five page long thing, all sorts of, you know, Credentials needed, this, that, the other thing, including a physical limitations and job description on what the physical aspects of her job are. That wasn't included in Mr. Daly's, even though he's running the maintenance department. So I want to know, is, and what the board should want to know, why was that job description changed? And you can tell you looking at them, they weren't typed by the, on the same system. They look totally different. Now the one that went to EdJoy looks just like Valerie's. But the one from Mr. Daly, that's not typed the same, not the same fonts, not the same bullet points, not set up the same way, and it requires more experience than what the board approved the night before. Who did that? How did that change happen? Might be kind of a minor thing, except for the other stuff going on here. Next, he was approved in January of 20, 2018 to start the next day, February 1st. So he was an employee. When did he stop being employed? I looked, I looked through all the certi certificated, I mean, excuse me, classified personnel reports. I don't see anything saying he left, resigned, was terminated. Nothing, not a word. I don't see anything saying that he became a contractor, that the board discussed becoming a con him becoming a contractor, that the board approved paying him as a contractor, but we have been. That's not on there anywhere. But all throughout the year, if people ask, he was still being described as an employee. And it was only when people said, well, how could he be an employee? They said, oh, no, maybe he's a consultant. We're not sure. Next, the CalPERS issue. What was it? I don't mean to know what specific items about him personally, but what was, how was he under CalPERS jurisdiction? I looked through the CalPERS met, um, manual for post-retirement employment. And you look under any of the categories in there, what we did with him wasn't right. And particularly, I look at the one where it's somebody who's under, one that does sound like him, the post-employment, post-retirement employment, somebody who's retired under disability or service disability. Because that's the only one that actually requires CalPERS pre-approval. And on that one, number one, it was illegal to hire him in the first place. And frankly, it was illegal to hire him as a contractor afterwards. They allow contracting under certain circumstances, but you go through those, None of those applied to him. Also, there are a lot of forms that have to be filled out. Job descriptions, things the district has to file. So was the district filing these things? If not, <coughs> who did? And if we were, why does nobody seem to know what it was CalPERS was actually doing and why it was taking a year? You know, and that you have the issues Karen talked about in terms of the salary then being changed later on. And all of these things, they should be looked at because that's not how you do business. But we did business that way. All of those things are wrong. We, have we gone to CalPERS and said, you know what? We retained this guy as, an elite, as a contractor to do exactly what he was going to do as an employee when it was illegal to hire him as an employee. Have we told CalPERS that? I mean, the CalPERS has got a nice you go on their, in their manual, which anybody can get right on the, on the web, it's got a nice number, email, address. You can say, hey, are we doing this right? Did we do that? Did we ever do that? Was the board told that he had a relationship with Ms. Porterfield? When were you told that? All these sorts of things, it's all just kind of fuzzy and floating around, and I don't know anybody who's gotten a straight answer to all of it. It sounds like everybody's been getting a different story as we've been going along. This may be one you need somebody outside, I don't know, county council, whoever, somebody who's not beholden to the district for money, who investigates, and it may be that every one of those things lines up with a nice, reasonable explanation for all of them. But we've got a whole bunch of things that don't look right on somebody who is hired, who has a very close personal relationship with the person overseeing the district. I would think the board would want all answers to all of those things lined up. And when you found them out, you should have been going, what's going on here? Not, well, hey, let's just 
quieted down and moved along. Not doing your job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. After the chair, I have a question. We have someone in the audience. I don't know who she is. I wonder if she can introduce herself, please. Me? Yes. Hello, oh, I'm Gina Beltramo. From? Oh, I'm with County Council. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Do we normally ask who the audience is? No. no. But we can. No questions, but I have a comment. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a perfect time. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Um, as you know, I, I take my job here very seriously. Um, and I did have concerns, and I did a lot of research about this um, agenda item. And so um, last night I took it upon myself to have dinner with um, uh, Miss Nancy McGee. She is the superintendent of our, of our county. And we, we discussed this, uh, we discussed several things that I initiated, and um, I don't really see um, a conflict of interest with Mr. Daly and Ms. Ms. Porterfield, and we, we discussed that in, in, in detail, because I, I wanted to feel good about my decision and about going through the different, um, the lens here, being a, a board member and, and a, either approving this or not approving this. And I did want to mention that um, going through some of the prior agendas, that the board, it was on the board agenda for January 31st, 2018, to approve um, Mr. John Daly at step four, and it was approved uh, with a roll, I don't know if it was a roll call vote, but the vote was five to zero. Everyone approved it, so I wanted to, I wanted to mention that. And I, I do wanna <clears throat> acknowledge what uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kiley said about the salaries. Um, it does look like there's different salaries listed out there, but I did wanna mention that the salary for the job that was posted in December 2017 was pretty aligned with the range that's currently posted on the district's website. So I'm sure there's an explanation as to why the salaries were different, but the salary that was posted, the, the job announcement right here that, that says, please post this job announcement, that range there from December 14th, 2017, that is that is pretty much very, it's within 3% of the, of the range that's currently posted for the current job. So I wanted, wanted to make that comment because I went through a lot of, uh, I, I really dug into this. I wanted to feel good about this agenda item. And so I just wanted to express that. Um, okay, first I'd like um, to uh, bring Frank to the vote, but also I did hear um, that there was uh, an allegation of a Brown Act violation. So regardless of the vote too, just ask the staff to pursue um, what that bearing that may have, depending on, on the vote and, and uh, the board's action following. Um, so if we could um, roll call vote, please. Well, Kevin, to the chair, don't you think that we would first want to see if we did violate the Brown Act before taking this vote regarding No, because the, uh, of course, okay. the reason why I'm saying, no, if you let me speak. Because the board, I, I think the board's is properly take may properly take action and um, investigation of Brown Act may have to do with um, with corrections that could occur subsequently. That's the nature of a of a Brown Act complaint, and I think that's it would be um, prudent for us to pursue that now, but also to go ahead, which is our prerogative, take action on items this. So. I, We'll call vote, please. Trustee Blanco? Nope. Trustee Chavez? Aye. Trustee Sanchez? Aye. Trustee Martinez? Aye. Um, I think passes at three, one with one abstention. Um, I did receive, and I think I take make the responsibility for the confusion at the start for uh, public comment, because there was a request for public comment that, that came after, but I think this. I, I, if there's no objection, I'd like to go ahead and entertain that. Um, that was uh, with me and Eddie. <laughs> so, hello everybody. My name is Eddie Picasso Martin. I go by Eddie. I'm a native here of uh, San Bruno, alumni of Bel Air School, alumni of uh, Parkside and Cappuccino. My daughters actually are alumni also. 
The reason I'm here, I was at the school site council meeting for Bel Air today, and um, I believe as a trainee, this is just my opinion for everybody, um, everybody for each school site council should be trained on what is it that we expect. Um, the hours, we need to get the agenda. The agenda was not sent to me, it was only sent to a teacher mm -hmm. and to Raul Gomez. But my concern is they approved minutes from the previous month, but we only had one parent there. In reality, the, the bylaw says that we we're supposed to have three parents there. So I'm not sure, I'm still learning this, but I'm hoping that someone's gonna be able to train me. But I was on the school site council for Parkside uh, when my daughter was there, and we needed to have a quorum. That was just it, if things were approved. We also had copies electronically um, and or hard copy of the budget. And at the last meeting that I attend to for the school site council, it was in February, so I did not attend uh, the one in March. It was told, and that was recorded, uh, because I am a slow learner, and I don't remember things, so I need an additional um, help device. Mm -hmm. And it was said that um, the LCAP budget was not given to Ms. Dees from Ms. Kemp because it was still being drafted, okay? It was still being approved. I asked today for a copy of the budget, and this is my opinion, I was being stonewalled, but one of the things was um, Raul Gomez and uh, Ms. Dees, she did say, well, the LCAP, all the money went to SEAL. There is no money left. And so SEAL, as far as I know, is only for K through three. And at that last meeting in February, which I do have recorded, and I recorded the today's meeting also, just to let you know, and it will be on the San Bruno um, Park Schools District Citizen uh, YouTube channel that has been created and all my videos that have been recorded in the last couple of years that I do have access to will be uploaded hopefully in the next week. But it's, um, so when I asked about this LCAP, to me it's important because if we want the community to sponsor our schools and give us grants and so forth, we need to be able to give them measurable goals, smart goals, right? But how do we do this if our administration at Parkside is not given the information of the money that we have for LCAP? If we're, I'm an advocate for the seniors in our community, in our community, and the at-risk, our children, all of them. I'm not. I don't look at ethnicity, their social class. I look at a, a child. I want to ensure that they come to school and that they're fed. That anything that has their social emotional skills. That basically, it's mind, body. I used to say soul, but it's actually mind, body, and spirit. That when they come in the front door, they have at least a, a banana, an apple in their stomach. But because some of these students are in foster care or they live out of the city, then in reality, the school, the food that we provide in the morning is not sufficient. We need to be able to provide food at a different time where they can come into the office and they can grab a banana because I know me, I'm a grouch if I'm not fed. And you can't, in my opinion, you cannot have a child go to school starving and then it could be that they're an English learner, you have no idea what they're going on at home. It could be they're going through a divorce, um, their family may be going through a drug addiction, <coughs> a loss of grandparent. I lost my mother-in-law three years ago and we still haven't worked. Will we ever? No, we're looking for the new normal. What the new normal is, I don't know. But the thing is, that's my problem. But we need to help our children, all, all of them. But if they're telling me, and it's basically, we need, it's not about the negativity or pointing fingers. It's like, okay, let's, they're telling me it's 30 days before the school ends. What's gonna happen to these students? We, don't, we weren't able to get a teacher, a certified teacher for mentoring. Um, I asked about mentoring for the students and they said that we had a contract or we had a partnership with Notre Dame, but it, end, it ended not in good terms. And to me, it's like, well, it changed the mind shift. We have new administration. We can't just say, oh, well, we, we failed. No, we failed, let's reach out to them. It's new personnel, new, they're in education for a reason. 
They're in Notre Dame because they want to help every child who walks into that college to succeed. And I'm pretty sure that if they're there, they would want to come and help our children because they're not going to remember whatever politics happened two years ago. At least I don't. Because I don't see any of you as, as my enemies. To me, I'm, I'm, we're here to work together. And I'm coming from advocating for a community of the at-risk children. And when I'm told that, well, they're, the district is trying to cross their T's, and they're crossing their T's and dotting their I's, and we don't have, it's not Dr. Kent's fault, it's Wendy's fault. I don't care whose fault it is, but if we're April 24th and the year is almost ending and you still don't have a budget for the LCAP, don't point fingers and don't tell me yesterday was a, did we have a short week. I don't want that. We need accountability. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not here to point fingers. I'm here as you tell me, and I do things at my leisure because of my health issues. But, you know, send me an email, give me a call. When I have a chance, and I have the nerve to talk to Dr. Sanchez or to you, um, we actually spoke a couple of weeks ago, but tell me, give me some ideas, because it does take a lot, anyways. So, one more thing, um, teacher conferences, they need to be interpreted. So, the nonchalant comment was, well, we didn't have interpretation interpreters for two days. And I'm like, well, okay, two days doesn't sound a lot, but how many students were affected? And I went, I have a parent certificate um, from uh, San Diego State University, and I did the, the uh, certificate. I went twice to Costa Mesa. But it's, and it's in books, and I can give it to you, and it states that you can't have a child, a sibling coming to a conference and telling us, telling the parent, what they're interpreting to tell their mom. In reality, they're not gonna catch up. If we don't teach our kids and, and really pay attention to what's going on and help them, they're gonna be lost in Parkside, just like I was. And they're gonna be really lost in um, high school, and good luck, I mean, the statistics that shows in San Mateo County, one out of two college students repeats, uh, comes back for one year and they don't come back, 50%. We can change that because it starts here. And I have faith in all of you. Thank you. Yeah, so and, um, one of the things that you're, you specifically asked for was the, um, LCAP the budget. budget for the LCAP at Bel Air, correct? Yes. Okay, but yeah, I'm just getting confused. Maybe well, something about Parkside. But, so I think that's something that, that the staff could provide school site or yes so each school received their budget allocation in May or June of 2017 of, of 2018 for the 2018 2019 school year so I find it difficult to believe that the school does not have a copy of their allocation when in fact that was provided to them prior to the end of the year because they need that for their school plan to develop their school plan they have not yet received the budgets for the 2019 2020 school year and so we'll follow up with the principal regarding that. Uh, that should be part of the school site council. Um, and, and, you know, every every meeting you should go over the budget. Yeah. So if they if if we can show that that a copy then is also provided to yes, as, we'll have to the request. If you'll leave, do we have your email address, Eddie? Uh, yes. If not, I will. Okay. 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 Miss Dees. Okay. okay. Miss Dees has it. Right. But, we'll, we'll but just to let you know, it is for the 218 219 budget that they have not received and. Um, what is it, that reading tool, Rancid, or what is it called? There's a reading tool that is given. Well, anyway, that's we, didn't have, yeah, we didn't have money for that. Right, but that's, we'll still do that. But that, that's, it's on record that's, twice, and it's going to be on the YouTube channel for the citizens. So I would appreciate that. It's not pointing fingers. It's like, we have 30 days to do something about it, and then going cool. forward, let's tackle it. Because I don't... So as I mentioned, the school did receive their budget for the 2018-2019 school year last spring. They used that budget to develop their school plan, so we'll get that copy of that to you and to the site principal. And then I would like for you, if you can, really take a time to listen to the school site meeting mm -hmm. that was recorded today. Uh, one more thing, it, another comment was that it was twisting arms at the San Bruno Education Foundation that they don't want to help. So that's their interpretation because I'm working with somebody who's part of the San Bernardino Education Foundation 
who is actually willing to help and listen and redesign. So we do need to get communication across. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, just to highlight an item at uh, Future Business, so we have uh, 2019 to 2020 budget and LCAP uh, study session can you probably help uh, scheduled for May 22nd. Um, the facility school tomorrow site update on facilities transformation uh, at the May 8th board meeting. Uh, Angle property study session, the board will um, uh, go on site to take a look at the Angle property and uh, debrief afterwards. That's on Saturday, May 11th. Summer programs review uh, is, is that correct? It's September? It would be after we complete the summer program. I see. I, I can't do it. Just looked at it right here. Uh, it governance and organization has been placed on, on the, um, will be on the agenda for May 8th. Um, are there any other good questions? Um, future meeting dates then are uh, a regular board meeting on May 8th. On uh, May 22nd, a regular board meeting here at the Chair. Yes. I'd like to request that we move the May 22nd board meeting to Allen as we will be doing a um, recognition for our retirees, okay. uh, returning principals re uh, and the retirees uh, with a reception following that. So we anticipate we will have a full house. On May 22nd. On May the 22nd, yes. So I think, yeah, no objection, we'll go ahead with that. Mm -hmm. um, June 12th, regular board meeting at Parkside uh, Middle School is uh, televised at 7 o'clock. And uh, on June 26th, the regular board meeting at uh, Allen Elementary School, that's uh, for passing the uh, LCAP and budget, uh, primarily. And uh, with that, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure.